the meaning of error? How the errors would occur? Do you know at what stages these errors would occur? You are at right place. Hi, my name is Krishna Akumala. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. We are going to discuss about rectification of errors chapter. In this chapter, I am going to cover what is the meaning of error, how these errors would occur, and at what stages these errors would occur. These are the three important you know, topics I am going to cover. If time permits, I can also talk about different types of errors. Right? Let us not waste our time and get into the presentation. Right? Okay, guys. Let us get into the chapter, Rectification of Errors. What is an error? Let us understand that. What definition of errors is? Unintentional omission or commission of amounts and accounts in the process of recording the transactions are commonly known as errors. That is what the definition says. Unintentional omission. I'll talk about omission and commission later. First, let me focus on unintentional. Why are we stressing on unintentional? That is very important. If you really wanted to consider that as an error, your intention should be unintentional. You should not commit those kind of errors intentionally. If you do that intentionally, it will be a fraud. It will be a fraud. Because intentionally you are trying to do that you know, error, probably thinking something in your mind, that will be considered as a fraud. But here, unintentional omission. Unintentional omission means your intention is good. Your intention is good behind committing that error. So, as long as your intention is good behind committing that an error, that will be considered as an error. If the intention is not good, if the intention, intentionally if you are doing that mistake, that will be considered as a fraud. So, what definition says here is, unintentional omission or commission of amounts and accounts in the process of recording the transactions are commonly known as errors. What do you mean by omission? Omission is nothing but, you would have forgotten to record one transaction in journal book that is an omission or you recorded the transaction in journal book but forgot to post it in ledger that is unintentional clerical mistake it can be a clerical mistake or it can be a oversight but your intention is not to commit that mistake your intention is not to commit that mistake that is that that happened unintentionally Without your knowledge, that mistake you committed. You posted an entry in journal. You recorded the entry into the journal, but you forgot to post it into the ledger. Or you occurred a transaction, but you forgot to enter into a journal book. These are all omissions. These are all omissions. So, that omission should be unintentional. Are you getting my point? And unintentional commission of amounts. Why unintentional commission? For example, what do you mean by commission? Unintentional commission. That also we need to understand. Right? For example, I have I am supposed to debit to purchase account. Instead of debiting to purchase account, I debited to some other expenditure account. I committed a mistake. Commission is nothing but I committed a mistake there. I am supposed to debit purchases, but I debited some other account. That's a mistake, no doubt about it. That is an error, no doubt about it. But that is an unintentional commission. You are not intended to do that mistake. You are not 
intended to do that mistake. That is the reason we are saying, if you want to call that as an error, the intention should be unintentional and it can be omission. Omission is nothing but you forgot to record the transaction is omission or unintentional commission. What do you mean by commission? Commission is nothing but instead of recording in one account, you recorded in another account. Instead of recording in debit side, you recorded in credit side. Instead of creating, instead of recording it in credit side, you recorded in debit side. These are all commissions. You you made a you you committed a mistake. Commit commitment of the mistake is called commission. You committed a mistake there. So unintentional omission or a commission of amounts. So whatever I said. You forgot to post one entry is an unintentional commission. You, you are supposed to post in debit side of the purchase account, but you posted in credit side of the purchase account. That is also unintentional commission of amounts and accounts in the process of recording the transactions are commonly known as errors. Are you clear now? So, it should never be an intentional mistake. It should be unintentional mistakes to say that it is an error. That is what you need to understand. Now, you committed a mistake, you committed an error. The next question is, is this going to impact my trial balance? Right? Why are we preparing trial balance? We are preparing the trial balance to understand or to establish the arithmetical accuracy. Do you agree? Now, because of this unintentional omission or unintentional commission that might impact your trial balance or it may not impact trial balance as well. Simple example. Instead of debiting purchase account, I debit to repairs and maintenance account. It is debit anyway. The expenditure is instead of debiting to one account, I debit it to another account. That doesn't have any impact on trial balance because when I say doesn't have impact, from arithmetical accuracy point of view, if you look at both debit total and credit total in the trial balance, we'll get tallied. So you don't see any, any problem there in the trial balance because of this mistake. But it is a mistake. It is an error. So these unintentional omissions and commissions might lead to have a difference in trial balance or it might not lead to difference in the trial balance. Are you getting my point? If there is no difference in trial balance, you need to go through, while going through the, probably while doing the audit of your transaction, some, uh, you know, we, we might, you know, identify these mistakes and we need to rectify it. Suppose, if there is a difference, I already told you, whenever there is a difference, you can transfer the differential amount to suspense account and once you transfer that amount to suspense account, you need to start reconciling and identifying that mistake and rectify it. That is, that is the responsibility of an accountant. Do you agree with me? So, these errors, whatever you, you know, we are committing, those errors might have impact on trial balance or it may not have impact on trial balance. That is what I am trying to say here. Now, how these errors would occur? These errors will occur due to mathematical mistakes. Different reasons are there. I am going to give you some examples. Mathematical mistakes. What are those mathematical mistakes? For example, if I am following subsidiary books. While totaling the purchase day book, purchase book, instead of 1500, probably I would have totaled as 1200. Total mistake. It's a mathematical mistake, right? While balancing the ledger, I would have, you know, incorrectly balanced. Instead of 1500 as buy balance carry down and two balance brought down, I would have mentioned as 1200 there could be some subtraction problem or addition problem, right? So, these are all mathematical problems. So, your errors can happen because of the mathematical mistakes or your errors can happen 
while applying the accounting policies. What do you mean by accounting policies? For example, if you want to consider one sale transaction into the books of accounts, sale is nothing but your revenue. Goods sold is a revenue, right? If I want to consider goods sold as a revenue in my books of accounts, those goods would have been delivered and received by the customer. Those goods would have been delivered from our end and received by the customer. Then only you should consider that as a revenue. This, this will come under revenue recognition. How do we recognize the revenue? When do I recognize the revenue? Just because I prepared one invoice for sale, it doesn't mean that the sale is you know, done and I, 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 I can consider that as a sale. No. If the invoice is prepared and if the sale is, you know, has to be recognized, the goods should have been delivered to the customer and the customer should have accepted the receipt of the goods. Customer should have accepted the receipt of the goods. Then only you can consider that as a revenue. Otherwise, you should not consider. Are you getting my point? So, maybe some of the mistakes might happen because of the accounting policies. Another example I will tell you. Let us say there is an asset purchased. So, when we purchase the asset, what we are supposed to do? We need to debit asset account because asset is coming into the business. What debit, what comes in, I need to do. So, I need to debit asset account. Instead of debiting asset account, I debited some other expenditure which will have impact on my PL account. What is the difference between the, you know, the asset? Uh, being an expenditure or the expenditure which is being considered as a part of p and account. What is the difference between these two? The asset is a capital expenditure and the expenditure which you are charging to p and account is a revenue expenditure. So, being an accountant, you should know the difference between a capital expenditure and revenue expenditure. If you consider by any chance the capital expenditure as a revenue or a vice versa, revenue as a you know capital expenditure, your trial balance will tally because both are debited. Asset is also a debit balance. The revenue expenditure is also you know debit balance. Capital expenditure is also debit balance. Revenue expenditure is also a debit balance. Instead of considering capital expenditure, you consider that as a revenue expenditure. Your trial balance will tally. But there is a problem with accounting policy. There is a problem with accounting policy because accounting policy says you need to distinguish between capital expenditure and revenue expenditure. If you don't even know the difference between these two, then it is wrong. Though your trial balance is tallying, your, though your trial balance is establishing that as you know, um, uh, arithmetical accuracy is in place, but there is a problem in the trial balance. You need to identify that. You need to rectify that. Third one, misinterpretation of facts. How do we misinterpret the facts? Simple example, the previous say, expenditure example you can take. I interpreted purchasing asset as an expenditure. I thought this is this is this need not be considered as a capital expenditure. One simple example I'll tell you. There are some huge repairs and maintenance expenses incurred for purchasing an asset. Uh, sorry, uh, when there is a problem with the asset. When there is a major repair happened in an asset, let us let us like this, uh, take the example like this. There is a major expenditure. So sorry, when there, there is a major repair happened in an asset, what we did, we need to rectify that. Otherwise, it will have a, a production impact. So I went and you know spent some amount on repairs and maintenance of that particular machinery. That amount is very huge because of that expenditure incurred. The capacity of the machinery, the production capacity of the machinery is increased. Production capacity of the machinery is increased. That means the expenditure which I incurred, either it should increase, enhance my production capacity or the machinery which was already got stacked because of the repair. Now the production started and this is the major expenditure which has, you know, in capital in nature. Hence, I need to capitalize that repair and maintenance. I need to capitalize that repairs and maintenance. If I don't, I thought, okay, this expenditure, though it looks major, I felt, okay, this is repairs and maintenance. No, let me debit to my PL account. It's an interpretation problem. 
Why it is an interpretation problem? I thought it is a regular repairs and maintenance. But it is not regular repairs and maintenance. I spent a huge amount to bring in that machinery into the production. So, that should be considered as a capital expenditure. Instead of considering that as a capital expenditure, I interpreted that expenditure as revenue and I debited to my p and account. So, obviously it is a mistake. So, my interpretation is wrong. See, these are all unintentional, you see. Mathematical mistake, that is unintentional. You made a mistake. It, there is no intention behind to do the mathematical error there. Right? Mistakes in applying accounting policies. Yeah, that will be an understanding problem or, you know, uh, you were, you know, learning problem, right? So, it is, intention is good, but applying the accounting policy might, you know, uh, might have gone you know, wrong. Similar way, misinterpretation of facts. Misinterpretation facts are what? Your interpretation is wrong, but your intention is good. Your interpretation is wrong, but your intention is good. You are doing your job, but while interpreting that particular expenditure as a you know, capital expenditure, you interpreted that as a revenue expenditure. That is an error, no doubt about it, but that is not a fraud. That is not a fraud. So, misinterpretation of facts is also one type of, you know, errors we commit. Oversight mistakes might also happen. Suppose, journal entry is posted for 5,400 rupees. While posting that amount into the ledger, probably I would have posted that as 4,500. Interchanged the figures. 5,400 has been interchanged to 4,500. It's an oversight mistake. I thought my, my brain was saying 5,400, 5,400, 5,400 while going there, I put 4,500. It's a oversight mistake. I would have thought it is 4,500 and I posted. It's a oversight, clerical mistake. So, these kind of mistakes might happen. So, you need to understand what kind of errors, you know, can happen. It can be a mathematical error. It can be an accounting policy related error. It can be an interpretation you know, related error. It can be a oversight error. Are you getting my point? Next, what stages you incur these kind of errors? What stages these errors can happen? There are different stages. At the time of posting journal itself, this mistake can happen. Any of these mistakes can happen at the time of posting journal entry. Right? While preparing the journal entry, suppose repairs and maintenance, huge amount of repairs and maintenance expenditure I incurred for major expenses for you know, bringing that machinery into the production. So, I need to post an entry. What entry I need to put? I should not debit repairs and maintenance. Why? Because it is a major repairs and maintenance, it has to be capitalized. If I need to capitalize that repairs and maintenance, I need to debit an asset, not repairs and maintenance. Asset account debit to cash account or bank account, I am supposed to write an entry. But what did I do? I did debit repairs and maintenance and credited bank account or cash account. So that entry is incorrect entry. Right? At the time of posting that entry into the journal itself, the mistake happened. From there, automatically it will go to I post it to ledger. <coughs> <coughs> from there it will go to ledger so obviously if the mistake happens in journal the same mistake will get carried forward to ledger as well so mistake can happen at the time of posting the entry into the journal book next one at the stage of posting the entries into the ledger so I posted correctly in journal entry in journal book, I posted correctly. But what I did, while I already recorded correctly in journal book, for example, purchases debit to cash account, I posted entry in journal. But while I need to transfer this purchases to purchase account in ledger, right? While 
posting the transaction into the ledger instead of debiting to purchase account i debited to some other account some expenditure account so where is the mistake happened the mistake happened at the time of posting into the ledger the mistake is happened at the time of posting a ledger so mistake can happen at journal level mistake can happen at ledger level as well third one mistakes can happen at the time of balancing the ledger accounts while balancing the ledger you might you know do a to totaling error instead of totaling the total comes to 1500 but you by 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 mistake you did a mathematical error and uh, you know you totaled that as 1200 so obviously your balance will go for you know task your balance will give an incorrect picture so at the time of balancing itself you can do a mistake so that is also possible next one at the time of at the stage of preparing the trial balance also you can commit a mistake one classic example you refer my previous videos where uh, one illustration i explained from institute of you know, chartered accountants of india one person prepared a trial balance and he gave the trial balance to us and asked us to see whether he corrected he, he correctly prepared the trial balance or not so we rectified that he incorrectly you know uh, updated trial balance then we uh, we identified those incorrect you know updates and we rectified them you you can refer that illustration in my previous videos we, we did that problem so the mistakes can happen at the time of preparing the trial balance also so different stages the mistakes can happen at a journal level it can happen at the time of posting entries into the ledger the mistakes can happen at the time of balancing the accounts into the ledger the mistakes can happen at the time of preparing trial balance the mistakes can happen so these are the different stages the mistakes can happen are you getting my point so what is that we learned so far we learned what is the meaning of error how the errors you know occur and at what stages the errors can occur these are the three important points we understood now if you have any questions on this please comment on my video i will definitely clarify your doubts this is one next one after looking at these three important concepts after after learning what is an error after learning at what kind of errors can occur at what stages the errors can occur the errors are categories basically categorized into two types errors are basically categorized into two types what are they errors are basically categorized into two types what are they errors of principle clerical errors that's all these are the two categories they, they, they divide it. All errors, whatever errors you consider, whatever errors you commit at different stages, they all been you know divided into two categories. Errors of principle. Errors of principle. I already explained this errors of principle previously. Once again, I'll give you an example. I purchased a computer, for example. I purchased a computer. What is computer? Tell me, computer is an asset. Do you agree? Right? So, which account I need to debit when I purchase computer? I need to debit computer. Am I right or wrong? When I purchase the computer, I need to debit computer only. But instead of debiting computer, if I debit office expenses, what will happen? Both are debit only. So there is no problem in trial balance but principally it is wrong why it is principally wrong computer is a capital expenditure office expenditure is a revenue expenditure so you are not differentiating between a capital expenditure and a revenue expenditure you are simply posting that entry into p and l account the computer when you when you debit to computer account that should go to balance sheet as an asset instead of debiting to computer account the minute you debit office for office uh, expenses account that will go to pnl account the minute it goes to the pnl account what will happen to that extent your profit will go down you are understating your profits so it is a principle 
uh, you know error because you do not understand the difference between a capital expenditure and revenue expenditure which has resulted transferring that amount to p and l instead of transferring to balance sheet what is the result outcome of it the outcome of that mistake is your profit and loss account is un, uh, you know is under uh, overstated expenses are overstated and your profit is understated your profit is understated so what what kind of mistake is this this mistake is called errors of principle because you didn't follow the principle accounting principles as simple as that so there are many examples we can quote right so if you have any doubts and clarifications on this particular errors of principles please comment on this video krishna i do not understand how to how to consider this this kind of error will this error come under errors of principle or will this error come under clerical error you you if you have any such kind of doubts please ask so i can quote this as an example for errors of principle clear clerical errors what type of clerical errors can happen this also i explained once again i'll, I'll repeat it clerical errors are basically categorized into three errors of omission errors of commission compensating errors clerical errors are categorized into three what are they errors of omission errors of commission compensating errors errors of omission i already told you what you, what did i say in you uh, know my previous example errors of omission is nothing but i forgot to post that entry into the journal book i incurred one expenditure let us say i purchased goods but i forgot to record that transaction into the books of accounts in journal book so omission i omitted i forgot to write that in journal that is called errors of omission getting my point what do you mean by errors of commission errors of commission is nothing but it should have been i purchased i i posted an entry for purchases purchase account debit to cash account right so this purchase debit has to go to purchase account in ledger Instead of posting to purchase account, I posted to some other expenditure. What kind of error it is? It has been posted to wrong account. It has been posted to a wrong account. Instead of posting to purchase account, I posted to some other account. Or instead of debiting purchase account, I created purchase account. That is also errors of commission. so what it says if an amount is posted in the wrong account or it is written on wrong side or the totals are wrong or wrong balance is struck anything can be considered as errors of commission if i total while while balancing if i total incorrect amount with the incorrect amount that is that is errors of commission while balancing if i do a mistake it is an errors of commission i committed a mistake there getting my point compensating errors third one is compensating errors generally what will happen you take an example you received an amount from a you received an amount from a what entry you post cash account debit to a account am i right cash account debit to a account because cash received so you debit cash and credit a account instead of crediting a account i posted cash account debit to sales account cash account debit to sales account what will happen now instead of crediting a i created sales instead of crediting a account i created sales if you look at trial balance level it will tally how it will tally if i would have correctly posted to a account that would have shown a credit balance but instead of 
showing that as a credit balance in AA, I showed credit balance in sales. It will not have any impact on trial balance because it is, this is also credit, this is also credit, sales is also credit. It will not, it will not have any impact on your trial balance. It shows as if it is you established an arithmetic accuracy there. But is it right thing to do? Have you done correctly? No, right? So you need to identify that as a you know error and rectify it. How to rectify? What kind of entries we need to post? All of them we are going to discuss. Don't worry about it. This is just the you know, starting of the chapter. Don't worry about that. I'll explain in detail. And this is very, very important chapter, my guy, my friends. You know why? If you do not know how to rectify your journal entries, how do you become an accountant tomorrow? How do you become a chartered accountant? How do you become a company secretary? Or how do you become a you know cost accountant? Or you should know how to rectify the things, right? Mistakes are common. Mistakes will happen. Right? If you do not know how to rectify those mistakes, if you do not know how to rectify those errors, how are you going to you know, perform as an accountant? That is the reason. This is the very, very important chapter. My sincere request to you is, please go through this, whatever I explained so far in this video. And come back to me with your doubts. I am here to support you and help you out. I request you to comment on my video. Right? Other topics related to the same rectification of errors we are going to discuss in next video. I don't want to make this video hours together. So I'm 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 stopping here and I request all of you to go through this video and any doubts please come back to me. Right? If you like the content Please like the video, share this video with your friends and colleagues. Thank you so much.